about those Paragon boards. Oh, let's do it. Okay. Paragon boards. So we've, uh, we've talked a bit about Paragon in the past. You know, we've shown pictures of the board just like this. And we've shown you things like, hey, look, like here's normal node. And this is a way that you're going to earn like five willpower. You know, uh, but that's not all this board is about. You know, there's a lot of other, uh, there's a lot of other complexity and things to deal with in here. So there are basically four types of nodes to kind of like quickly uh, reprise some of this information. Uh, the first, of course, is normal nodes. Then we have what you show here is matic nodes. These are different affixes that you can collect over the course of time. Usually they're like a little bit more difficult to find a direct like version of on items. So like something like this, for example, crackling energy uh, damage. So there's a, so that's a, that's a, a sorceress of like a lightning, uh, lightning spec sorceress uh, ability or uh, passive effectively where uh, she'll occasionally be crackling out damage to, uh, to nearby uh, targets. You can now boost that by finding this particular magic node, which kind of might uh, eventually unlock other builds for you to kind of go and chase after. But then there are rare nodes, which is on the next slide. And uh, here, okay, so there's a, some information here. Uh, rare nodes have a pretty powerful effect right off the bat. You know, and, but then on top of that, there's this, this bonus effect down below that you can, you can sort of see. Where uh, on this one, it is, yeah, another 60% damage to elites. If you reach a certain amount of dexterity for your character. Mm -hmm. So the point here is that like, rare nodes on their own, of which there's about 10 or more per, uh, per board. Rare nodes are already pretty powerful generically. But then on top of that, if you were able to hit these thresholds for the, uh, for the stat requirements for these, uh, these rare nodes, that is going to make them very, very potent for, uh, for you indeed. And when you're looking at the board, these are some of the most, the most critical things you'd be thinking about when you're plotting your path through each board, which, you, of course, there are you know, a number of boards available for you to launch. And when you'll be able to rotate them, you'll have to choose how you want to progress through rare nodes, whether you want to engage with the legendary nodes or not. This is a really important thing. Yeah. One, other, one other bit about this, just because I, I, it's easy for me to forget about, is that... When you're going from Paragon board to Paragon board, like in the first board, this might be the cost. But then when you're looking at the second board that, uh, that you're progressing through, those requirements are actually going to go up. So it's not in your interest to go like run from board to board, just unlock as many of these as you can directly through that way. You need to spend a little bit of time into the board and pick the ones that you really want because the next board that you unlock to get more rare nodes of, of different types, those will be a little more expensive to unlock those bonus effects. The thing I think is really interesting about these is when I... The, the way that I look at the board, right, when I open a Paragon board, the first thing I do is go and look at the, rare, the nearest rare nodes to me, mm. to, to my, where I'm starting, right? <clears throat> and then I, see, I look at the, the uh, requirements for those bonuses, and then I start looking at the normal nodes on the way. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm pretty close to the dexterity required here through my gear. Um, are there some dexterity nodes that I could hit on the way here that would take me over it? And, you know, how much do I care about that particular bonus? And then I'm, you know, comparing it to the other ones, and I'm thinking about that. So the, the normal nodes actually become sort of a path that you're trying to take to turn on these bonuses. Absolutely. And that's not all. Uh, there's one more node type as well, and then we're going to get to back to normal nodes in just a second. So then we have our legendary nodes. So every one of the boards for each of the classes has a legendary node somewhere on it. And these are really, really powerful uh, powers like you'd expect. They are a legendary power effectively unique to the Paragon board system, for that class and for the, whatever the, that particular board is trying to convey as its overall build type. So these are really, really powerful things to go and collect, but they're actually not the most powerful thing. This is just an additional extra powerful affix you can kind of apply to your character, but you kind of do this in concert with other things that you're looking for, like I mentioned the rare nodes. And I also talked before about glyphs, and we're going to talk about that next. So when you basically, as you're going through the board, there are going to be these sockets that you can unlock. And the sockets are going to be sitting adjacent to a number of other regular nodes. Now, the way that glyphs work is that you're going to put them into one of these sockets, and they are going to be affecting nearby nodes and also fueled by other nearby nodes. So if you hit certain thresholds inside uh, some of the glyphs, you're also going to unlock powerful bonuses. They're going to other always uh, also affect uh, nearby nodes at the same time. And as I mentioned before, glyphs can be leveled up pretty high. They continue to grow the radius of the affected nodes as you level up through certain tiers. So they can uh, affect larger and larger areas. And the boards are not symmetrical in nature as you're progressing through. Because the player can rotate their board and choose which gate they actually want to, uh, to uh, enter from, uh, you have to like, kind of choose from board to board, which, where are the sockets on this board? Are they near the stats I really want for this glyph? Because you know, this glyph is going to be fueled by you know, dexterity nodes within range of the glyph, uh, glyph effect. And it's going to do additional like, critical strike damage, whatever it's going to do for me as a result. Uh, that's a really, really important choice to make. And because all of the boards have different configurations, different socket locations, and different things near those sockets, you have a lot of interesting decisions to make about like, where you actually want to invest your time. And how does it matter? Like, how does it feel to do this relative to the rare nodes you might need on that board from, uh, from a different board instead? Like, fun decisions for players to make as they're going through. We want, we want ultimately to feel like the Paragon system allows for like, two 
you know, incinerate, focus, burn type sorceresses to feel like they've got very different paths to the Paragon board, different decisions to make, even if all of their skill choices are identical. Yeah, it's something that, you know, we've talked about a lot with Diablo 4, is the idea that even if you have, uh, you know, let's say incinerate is a powerful sorcerer build uh, for, you know, um, and, and you want to play incinerate, mm. you're not going to necessarily be the same, uh, have exactly the same uh, loadout as another incinerate sorcerer. That's right. One thing I found really cool about the Paragon system that I didn't realize at first is that the, every Paragon board is almost like a Paragon class, like a specialization class where it's all built around a certain theme, fantasy, play style, um, and it all revolves around that, that central or off-central legendary node, and then the, the, the rares kind of support that same theme, and it extends to the blues. So like on a Necromancer, you're like, oh, this board is like the pure summoner uh, fantasy, and this one is the, 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 the blood mage, and looking at it that way really like made it uh, very cool for me to be able to explore. Okay, you know I can merge these two together. I'm going to go like bone and and blood and just further, uh, yeah, explore and, and dive into that that specialization. Yeah, you know there's uh, 220 paragon points that players will be able to have by the time they finish leveling up their character at level 100. Uh, we want those choices to feel like they've got meaning individually. Players can uh, can respect the number of those choices if they want for gold cost. Uh, we want to be able to play with this system and be able to like, kind of experiment with different ideas as they go. But importantly, we want them to feel like that the choices they made for the 220 matter a great deal to their overall performance. Yeah. Yeah, super fun. I think. You know, but, you know. 